there's a, there's a heading and it's a huge mouthful. Um, to understand it, to understand what the heading means, because that's always a, a good thing to start with, let's just tease this apart a little bit. We'll start with quadratic equations. You've met quadratic equations before, okay? Quadratic is when you're squaring something, right? By the way, if you ever wondered why is it called a quadratic, um, think of like a quadrangle. A quadrangle is usually the, the square in shape or rectangular. Okay? So for instance, this is a quadratic. We've seen this one before, right? We've seen it to death. That's quadratic. This is a quadratic equation. Right? You see what I added and what makes an equation. It's an equation because it's got an equal sign. Okay? Now, when you go to these words up here, okay, um, solving, solving means tell me what values would make this true. Right? How would we do this one, by the way? How would we do it? Yeah. Is it times to 6 and Good. I'm thinking of a pair of numbers that will multiply to 6 and add to five. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to factorize, right? So I have these two factors here. Of course, the numbers are two and three. Okay, but what do I do with that? Okay, so, so there's a pair of numbers, right? You multiply them and they get zero. So one or both of these numbers have to be zero, right? If this is zero, x plus two, then x should be negative two. That would make x plus two zero. Or alternatively, the other one, right? If x were negative 3, then x plus 3 would be 0, okay? Because you, you chuck it in and then it just vanishes away, right? So that's what it means to solve, okay? Now let's get to this last part, the most tricky part. Monic, monic, like a monorail or a, or a monocle, it just means 1, right? So it's referring to this number out the front, this guy here, okay? It's a 1. Um, because it's a 1, I don't usually write it because 1 times anything is just whatever the thing is, right? But there is really a one hiding there. So if that's what monic means, what do you think non-monic means? It means it's not a one, right? It could be a two or a three or a negative five or some other value that's not one, okay? So let me give you an example and we'll solve it together. So this is example two, that was monic. Here's a non-monic one for you. Okay, now we're just going to take this one example. I'm going to show you two ways to solve it. I like one way more than the other, and you'll see why in a second. And then leading up to next Tuesday, um, you can start, I think it's exercise 1101, but I'll double check that. All right, so here comes method number one. I'll do it another couple. Because there are lots of ways to do this. In fact, I'm going to show you two today and I'll show you two more next week. And again, sometimes the challenge is not just to know the techniques, but to know when to use them. Right? Here comes number one. See how I'm trying to get towards this paired up thing here, this factorized form. Okay? The problem with doing one of these is not quite as simple. Just think of a number that multiplies to 10 and adds to 9. Right? Like I did up here. Because this pesky 2 out the front is making things more complicated. Right? So here's one technique that I can use. That 9x in the middle, I want to break it up into two parts. One of which will factorize with this, and one of which will factorize with that. Okay, so I'm breaking it apart. Right? So for example, and you'll see why I picked these numbers in a second. Do you agree that 9x is the same as 4x plus 5x? Is that okay? That's one way I could break it up. It's not the only way I could break it up. But the reason why I choose 4 and 5 is because now this becomes a pair and this becomes a pair I can factorize, right? Um, if, for instance, I hadn't chosen 4x and 5x, suppose I'd chosen uh, 3x and 6x. 3x and 6x, okay? This pair and this pair won't factorize as neatly. Whereas here, watch what happens. First pair, what common factor can I take out? Two. two, I can take two, and I can take an x. So I'm going to write two x out the front. Okay. Once I take two x out, what do I get left behind me? <coughs> there's an x, and there's a two. Good. X plus two. Fantastic. I've done the first pair. Right. When I look at the second pair, what factor can I take out? Five. Five. That's all I can do. And again, see, this is why I've chosen my numbers, I got x plus 2. If you've chosen your pairs well, you get the same thing happening twice, right? If you get different things, you can't really progress to the next step, right? Just like I factorized this, I took out a 2x. I'm going to factorize this now. What's the common factor? x plus 2. 
I've got an x plus 2 happening for both of them, right? Once I take that out, what am I left with? 2x plus 5. You see that? You see where my 2x and plus 5 come from? 2x and plus 5. Okay? And now I'm in my magical factorized form. Okay? So I've got it here. Now I can solve this thing. Right? What value of x will make this part 0? Negative 2. Very good. Right? What value of x will make this part? Zero. And this one's a bit trickier because you've got this fractional business here, but I think you can convince yourself it's minus 5 over 2. Okay? That 2 will cancel there. You'll be left with minus 5 plus 5 equals 0. I'm done. Okay? And that was method 1. It's a good method when it works. Okay? But it's a little bit like, as you'll see when we do later examples um, for your homework and next week, it's a little bit like counting on your fingers and toes, okay? So my son is four, and he's just trying to master numbers between 10 and 20, okay? And he literally needs to use his fingers and toes. And if I ask him to count, can you count to 17, right? He will say, he will go one, two, three, da, 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 and he'll end up, on, he'll end up on his second foot on 17, right? If I say, now can you tell me what's two less than that? He has to start back at one, and then go up to 15. He can't subtract two, right? So it works, but it's very, very slow. And of course, we don't need to do that anymore. So let me show you a better technique. Okay. It works in more examples. Same question. But I like this because it's more powerful and it works with negative numbers in particular, which we'll have a look at next week. Remember how here what I wanted was a pair of numbers, something and something, which added to 5, right? And I wanted a pair of numbers, something and something that multiplied to 6. Do you remember that? Okay. I'm going to do almost exactly the same thing, but I'm going to take this 2 into account. All right, watch. I want a pair of numbers that adds to give me 9, just like before. Okay. But now instead, I want a pair of numbers that multiplies not to 10, 20. but to 20. I'm going to take that product there. It's 2 times 10. So I want 20. Okay. Now, of course, you can see here, right? The reason why this is a great technique is because it hijacks this skill we already have. The pair of numbers, of course, is 4 and 5, right? 4 and 5. So here's what I'm going to do. It's very similar to this line with one little difference. I'm going to write plus 4 and plus 5. That's the two numbers you told me, right? But you've noticed I put a 2x in both places instead of just an x. This is a way of solving a problem, but it introduces another one. If I were to expand this out, like go in reverse, what's 2x times 2x? Because I've got the 2's happening twice, the 2's are going to come together and become a 4, and then the x's are going to come together and get a, an x squared. So I've got 4x squared. I don't want 4x squared, I want 2x squared. Okay? So I'm going to make up for that, I'm going to compensate by dividing by that number. Okay? If, for example, I have 5x squared here, I have 5x, 5x, divide by 5. Okay? Now, here's where the magic happens, right? If I'm dividing this whole thing by 2, can one of these brackets be divided by 2? Yeah. One of them can, right? It's the first one, isn't it? Okay. This one's not so great because it's got a, an odd number in it. That won't divide by 2 neatly. But this one will. Okay. So I can divide everything in here by 2. What am I going to get? X plus, two. X plus 2, just like we got before. You see that? Equals 0. Okay. Now, you can see two things. Number one, it is ever so slightly quicker. Ever so slightly. Okay. Um, secondly, it uses this skill you already have. Thirdly, which I haven't revealed yet, but you'll see, it's so much better if one of these is a negative, one of these is a negative, this process here becomes fiendishly hard and time consuming, just like counting to 17 on your toes. Okay? So therefore, I prefer this method. Once you've got to here, your answers are the same, just like before. Okay. 